The world is changing fast, and one country is changing it faster than we realize. You've heard about drones, you've seen lasers in movies, but what if I told you that a real nation is putting it all together right now, not in a lab, but in the real world? This isn't science fiction, it's today's headline. This is what's happening, and you need to understand why it matters to everyone, everywhere. We're not talking about distant future tech. The country leading this quiet revolution is Israel. For decades, they've been at the cutting edge of defense, born out of necessity to protect their small borders and a tough neighborhood. But what they are building now is different. This is a leap, not a step. It's a new kind of shield, a system that doesn't just wait for an attack. It tries to stop the attack before it even happens. Let's break it down, piece by piece, in simple terms. We'll look at the thinking drones, the lightning-fast lasers, and the brain that connects it all. By the end, you'll see a picture of a new kind of warfare and a new kind of peace. First, let's talk about the drones. When most people think of drones, they think of remote-controlled planes with cameras. Israel is changing that idea completely. Their newest drones are more like independent robots in the sky. They don't need a person to joystick them around every second. They use artificial intelligence, which is like a very smart computer program, to fly themselves. They can follow a preset path, watch a border, and scan the ground below for anything unusual. Here's the simple genius of it. These drones learn. Every time they fly a mission, the AI gets smarter. It gets better at telling the difference between a farmer on a tractor and something that might be a threat. But the biggest change is how they work together. Imagine not one drone, but 10 or 50 all in the sky at once, talking to each other. They share information instantly. If one drone sees something, they all know. They can spread out to cover a huge area, or they can swarm together on a single target. This swarm can be used to watch, to listen, or if needed, to act. It creates a blanket of security that is always there, always watching, and incredibly hard to sneak past. Now, what happens when something does get through, or when rockets or missiles are fired from miles away? This is where Israel's second big piece comes in, laser defense. For years, Israel has been famous for the Iron Dome, a system that shoots missiles to blow up incoming rockets. It works, but it has limits. Each interceptor missile is expensive, and a battery can run out if there are too many attacks. The new solution is pure light, high-energy laser systems. Think of a super-powerful laser pointer, but one strong enough to burn through metal in seconds. These lasers are designed to shoot down threats, rockets, mortar shells, even other drones. The beauty of a laser is its speed. It hits at the speed of light. There is no travel time for a missile. It's also incredibly precise, aiming at a small spot to disable the threat. And perhaps the biggest advantage? As long as you have power, you have shots. You're not limited by a stockpile of physical missiles. One laser system could, in theory, defend against hundreds of incoming threats, one after another, for the cost of electricity. Israel has been testing these systems openly and secretly, and they're getting closer to making them a standard part of their defense wall. But drones and lasers are just tools. They need a brain to tell them what to do, when to do it, and how to work together. This is the third and most important piece, the network. Israel is building a giant invisible web of information. It connects everything. It pulls in data from spy satellites high in space, from radar stations on the ground, from sonar in the sea, from the cameras on those smart drones, and even from intelligence reports. All this information, thousands of streams of data every second, flows into a central artificial intelligence system. This AI is the mastermind. Its job is not just to collect data, but to understand it. It looks for patterns. It learns what normal traffic looks like on a border. It learns the signs that might mean someone is planning something. The goal is prediction. The system tries to see a threat forming long before a rocket is launched or a drone is sent flying. When it detects a real threat, it doesn't just scream an alarm. It can recommend the best response. Should it alert a drone swarm to investigate? Should it power up a laser defense battery and give it a target? 
the AI can analyze the threat level, the weather, the location, and suggest the fastest, most effective way to stop it. In some cases, for very fast, clear-cut threats, it might even be authorized to act on its own, because sometimes human reaction time is just too slow. This is the shift, from a defense that reacts to an attack, to a system that tries to prevent the attack altogether. Let's picture how this all works together in a real scenario. Say a group miles away prepares to launch a batch of low-cost rockets towards a town in Israel. Old systems would wait for the rockets to be fired, detect them in flight, and then try to shoot them down. In the new system, the AI network might spot the warning signs earlier. Maybe a drone's sensors pick up unusual movement in a known launch area. Maybe communication chatter is intercepted. The AI flags it as a high probability of an attack. It alerts command centers and automatically tasks a nearby drone swarm to get a closer look. The drones confirm the launchers. At the same time, the system calculates the expected flight path of the rockets and readies the nearest laser defense stations, slewing them to aim at the predicted sky. The moment the rockets are launched, radar confirms it. The lasers, already aimed and charged, fire. Several rockets are melted out of the sky in the first few seconds of their flight. Any that get past might be engaged by traditional interceptors like Iron Dome. The drone swarm might even be directed to the launch site to disable the crew or prevent further launches. The entire engagement, from detection to neutralization, happens in minutes or even seconds with minimal human command. The town is protected, the attackers are stopped, and the defense system just got a little smarter, logging all the data for next time. This isn't just about protecting against rockets. This integrated shield covers land, air, and sea. Israel is also deploying unmanned boats, robot boats that patrol the coastline. These boats are part of the same network. They watch for swimmers, for small boats that might pose a threat, and they protect gas platforms out in the Mediterranean Sea. They send their data back to the same AI brain. So now the defense is 360 degrees. From the sea to the sky to the deserts, it's all connected. A threat from any direction can be seen, shared, and dealt with by the most appropriate tool in the arsenal. So what does all this mean for Israel? The benefits are clear. First, it's a powerful deterrent. If your enemies know that their attacks will likely fail, and fail instantly and cheaply, they might think twice before launching them. It saves lives, both of soldiers and civilians. It protects critical infrastructure like airports and power plants. It also saves money in the long run. While the technology is expensive to develop, using a laser shot that costs a few dollars in electricity is much cheaper than firing a million-dollar interceptor missile. Israel allows maintained security without always having to have massive numbers of troops on every border. The shield works automatically, around the clock. But this technology also brings big questions and challenges. For one, it could start a new kind of arms race. Neighboring countries and other world powers see what Israel is doing. They will want their own smart drones, their own laser defenses, their own AI networks. Or they will work hard to find ways to beat the system, maybe with even bigger swarms of cheap drones, or with electronic weapons that jam the signals, or with cyber attacks to hack the AI brain itself. The race won't just be for more bombs, it will be for smarter tech and better hackers. There is also a major ethical question. How much decision-making should we give to a machine? Is it right for an AI to decide on its own to fire a laser or release a drone swarm that could take a life? Where do you draw the line? Israel and other nations developing this tech insist there will always be a human in the loop for the biggest decisions. But in a fast-moving attack, that loop might be very, very short. This is a debate the whole world needs to have as this technology spreads. And it will spread. The United States, China, Russia, the United Kingdom, all major military powers are working on their own versions of these technologies. Israel is often a pioneer and a testing ground, but the ideas are universal. The future of military defense and maybe even of policing and border security everywhere is heading in this direction. Fewer human soldiers in direct danger, more sensors, more robots, and more AI analysis, and weapons that disable rather than always destroy. For the average person, this future has two faces. 
On one hand, it promises safer cities. Imagine a world where ballistic missiles or terrorist drones simply cannot reach populated areas, burned out of the sky by silent, invisible lasers. The idea of hiding in a bomb shelter could become a thing of the past. On the other hand, it brings a world of constant, invisible surveillance and machines that can use force without a human pulling a trigger. It's a trade-off between safety and privacy, between security and human control. Israel's push into this integrated defense network shows us a clear path. It shows that the next generation of security is not about building bigger walls or bigger bombs, it's about building smarter systems. It's about information, speed, and precision. It's about seeing the first move of your opponent and being ready to counter it before their move is even complete. This technology is real, it's being tested in the real world right now, and it's changing the rules. So, what do you think? Is this the perfect shield, a way to finally protect innocent lives from the chaos of war? Or does it open a dangerous door to automated conflict in a world where wars are fought by machines against machines? The answer is probably a bit of both. One thing is for sure, the age of smart defense is here. It started in a small country with big challenges, and it's coming to the rest of the world. Understanding it is the first step to navigating the future it will create.